want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Brand. All right, today I wanted to talk a little bit about a story that I found out in Fox News that uh, deserved a little talking, and that was uh, entitled Buzzkill, Medical Marijuana Popularity Threatens Legal Pot Push. And this is talking about the controversy that's growing in Washington State right now between the people who are supporters of medical cannabis versus uh, the Liquor Control Board, which has been tasked with regulating uh, recreational marijuana. And remember that a lot of these people on the medical marijuana side that are quoted in this piece are people that openly opposed recreational marijuana. They openly opposed I-502 for the fears that it would hurt patients. And their two primary talking points were the five nanogram per milliliter DUI that we are all talked to death about. But the other point that they brought up is that Having a recreational marijuana market, particularly with taxation involved in it, would lead to the inevitable taxation of medical marijuana. And this is what they're complaining about in this latest piece. Uh, the concern is that when recreational pot goes on sale in 2014, it is going to cause the legislature to have to tax medical marijuana in order to prevent there being an incentive to get on the medical list merely for the low prices. The original uh, proposal, uh, I-502, when uh, it was being backed by the campaign uh, in 2012, touted an expected $500 million tax windfall every year from the sales of recreational pot. But their state pot czar, uh, Mark Kleiman, the professor from UCLA, says that the competition for medical marijuana could cut that in half. Uh, the amount of tax revenue that the state would receive. Now, the Washington law is also unique uh, among all medical marijuana states in that it does not have a registry. Uh, now, a lot of states have voluntary registries. Washington has no registry. All you need is your letter, your recommendation on tamper-proof paper written from your doctor in Washington State or your naturopath, and you are a medical marijuana patient. And no taxation of medical marijuana as, as well. But I-502, uh, which passed in uh, November, legalizing an ounce for all adults, sets the tax rates at 25% at three stages. From the grower, from the seller, and to the buyer. And then on top of that, have to pass uh, or have to uh, pay the sales tax uh, in Washington State, which, according to my records here, Washington State sales tax is six and a half percent. So you're going to have people uh, buying marijuana, 25% tax wholesale, 25% tax retail, 25% tax to the seller or to the buyer, and six and a half percent sales tax on top of that. We are talking about marijuana that may end up being priced twelve fifty to fifteen dollars a gram. We're talking about ounces that are going to be priced around $400, $450. Meanwhile, at the medical marijuana uh, farmers markets and outlets that we find all throughout the state of Washington, marijuana is typically selling for about $200 an ounce or even less than that, $10 a gram or even less than that, depending on the strain. This, of course, is going to make medical marijuana a whole lot cheaper than recreational marijuana and create a perverse incentive for people to want to get a medical marijuana recommendation solely as a way to save money. And then in addition, there's already the incentive to get the medical marijuana card because medical marijuana people can grow up to 15 plants. Recreational users are not going to be allowed to grow any marijuana whatsoever. So the lure of cheap price and the lure of being able to grow is going to be too much to overcome. These people are going to want their uh, cheap uh, marijuana and their right to grow. And that's going to cause the medical marijuana side of uh, Washington State's uh, uh, pot industry to get overwhelmed by recreational consumers. That will then be used by the people who are against medical marijuana, the Kevin Sabets and Patrick Kennedys of the world, to say, see, you can't have legalized marijuana. You can't have medical marijuana. It's all a bunch of uh, fakes. It's all a bunch of frauds. People trying to just get a cheaper price or trying to grow. However, I do have to call out the medical marijuana side uh, a little bit here. 
in the fact that it seems like they want to have it both ways. Uh, here's a quote from Steve Sarich, who is from the Cannabis Action Coalition. He is also the primary person against Washington's I-502, spending lots and lots of money that he made from selling weed to make sure people who buy weed that aren't sick would still go to jail. Uh, he said, quote, it's I either it is medicine or it's not medicine, but it can't be medicine and be taxed. Sarich points out that no prescription drugs are currently taxed. Now, this is absolutely true. There is no tax on prescription drugs in any of the United States, uh, with the exception, I believe, of the state of Illinois. And let me confirm that. Yes, state of Illinois does have a 1% tax on prescription drugs. Aside from that, no other state taxes prescription drugs. Uh, and there are five states, of course, that have no sales tax whatsoever. Those would be Alaska, Delaware, New Hampshire, Montana, and uh, Oregon. So those states don't... Oh, and Oklahoma, excuse me. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Oregon. That's right. So those st states don't tax prescription medications either. But when we look at non-prescription drugs... There are only nine states in the United States. That would be Florida, Maryland, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, Texas, Vermont, and Virginia. There are only those nine states that don't tax non-prescription drugs. And technically speaking, medical marijuana in any state is a non-prescription drug. Steve Sarich and these medical marijuana people from Cannabis Action Coalition seem to want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to get the benefit of not taxing this prescription drug, not taxing marijuana because it's a medicine. But they don't want to have to jump through all the hoops and go through all the regulations and bureaucracy that it would take to make marijuana a prescription drug. Untaxed prescription marijuana is coming. It's called Sativex. It's going to be sprays and inhalers and canaceuticals made by Big Pharma that will be gladly untaxed. But the problem with trying to maintain medical marijuana, the whole plant, as a separate untaxed uh, item is, again, the fungibility of marijuana. You cannot tell medical marijuana from regular marijuana. And this is going to be impossible for any sort of regulatory agency to be able to control. It's going to lead to, to people trying to get their medical uh, recommendations in order to just skirt the tax, in order to be able to grow their uh, plants. And we're going to see a similar situation in any state that attempts to try to maintain a medical market and a recreational market alongside each other. So long as the medical people want to have some sort of special benefit for being sick for their use of marijuana, the people who aren't sick are going to try to take advantage of that benefit. Rather than fighting for medical marijuana to not be taxed, how about we fight for all marijuana to be reasonably taxed? I agree with the, the people that say the 25% tax rate at three different levels of the Washington scheme is very, very, uh, is really going overboard on the taxation. We know that if we overtax marijuana, if we artificially keep the price of marijuana too high, people will try to find a way to beat that price. Whether that means going back to the black market like they're doing currently, whether that means trying to get into the uh, Washington medical program as some people are doing currently, it doesn't matter. People who like marijuana are going to seek the lowest price for it. It is going to be impossible to maintain two different price points based on whether or not someone's sick or whether someone is healthy. So let's fight further for lowering the taxes on marijuana as a whole. And let's also start to recognize that the fight that we originally had for medical marijuana to get the sick off of the uh, battlefield in the war on drugs still maintains the idea that there should be a battlefield in the war on drugs. It still maintains the idea that some healthy people are going to be collateral damage in that war. I think at this point in American history, especially on the West Coast, especially in the states that have had medical marijuana since 2000 or before, it is time to go on the all-out offensive fighting for legalization and showing how legalization of marijuana for everyone is the only thing that 
prevents this dual industry, this dual setup of trying to maintain two different marijuana markets. Washington State's done what it had to do. It passed legalization and didn't do anything to touch the medical uh, marijuana. And this is one of the problems that we find is that in the states that have medical marijuana, there are now interest groups interested in keeping it just the way it is. Whether it be growers who like the prohibition profits without the chance of being busted by the state, whether it's the uh, medical marijuana doctors and clinics that have an entire business built up on getting people permission slips for the right to use cannabis, those entrenched industries are going to fight all attempts at marijuana legalization and trying to trying to uh, you know trying to cotton to them trying to 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 uh, accommodate the needs of the ten percent who are medical users ends up giving us laws that are going to in the long run hurt the medical cause. This situation in Washington State is just one of those situations. If originally 502 could have been written, if, if laws could have been passed that said, we're getting rid of medical marijuana, here's how all marijuana is going to work, we wouldn't have this situation of trying to artificially maintain two separate streams of, of marijuana commerce. A similar battle was fought in Oregon over the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act when it was originally written. It was going to supersede and replace all medical laws until the medical community screamed bloody murder about that. Despite the fact that what the bill was going to do was just open up the medical program for everyone. It was just going to create the same limits, the same uh, possession amounts, the same plant amounts for everyone, healthy or sick. But the medical com community was so afraid of losing their special privilege that they, they scuttled any chance of getting that bill passed. It's time for the medical people to start recognizing that only the path of full legalization for all people is ever going to truly protect the medical users. We just saw it in Michigan, where people with asthma, autism, and insomnia were denied from using medical marijuana by their panel. We see it in state after state that is continuing to have much more strict conditions to be able to get medical marijuana, like the state of Illinois, where chronic pain or severe nausea will not qualify you for medical marijuana. It's time to break through this idea of separating us by how sick we are and standing up for all cannabis consumers, sick and healthy, and coming up with laws that protect us all, laws that are fair to all of us. None of us should have to pay more for marijuana because we're sick or pay more because we're healthy. None of us should have to be restricted from growing marijuana just because we're healthy. It's one plant. Let's have one rule for all of its users. All right, that's all the time we got for today. Thanks for joining us here live from Miami, Florida. We've got more Florida interviews and shows coming to you all week long here. Thanks for joining us. I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com.